Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes from Gary Galbert KE5JZV. Well, Gary, let's see what we can do here. I'm searching for an antenna. I have a Butternut 60. I think by that he means a Butternut HF6. Um, or sometimes called an HF6V, that isn't working. I have very limited space for a radio system. Uh, some radials are better than none, that's for sure. I was looking for a flagpole antenna that doesn't require any radials and is easy to assemble. Okay, now comes the kicker. I am totally blind and have no technical assistance. I do have a son who can assemble things, but with no radio knowledge at all. I found the flagpole antenna that is manufactured by Grayline Performance, which might be a good bet for you. Any thought or ideas would be great. With the Butternut 60 in its current state, I get an SWR of 256 to 1. In other words, no good. No good to use at all. Well, first of all, let's talk about that butternut antenna. The butternut antenna, obviously something is wrong with it. You shouldn't be getting an SWR that high. Even with a fairly limited radio field, you should be able to tune the thing down on all the bands that it goes on. Uh, the lowest band should be able to be tuned right to one to one and uh, then it goes up from there and it varies on the different bands. Uh, the butternut antennas have never been great on 17, but you can always use a tuner uh, for that. Um, 256 to 1 means something is wrong physically with the antenna. Something is shorted or open, and it could be either one. And it could be a connection that appears to be solid but is not. Uh, you need to uh, clean uh, the pieces of the antenna where they connect together with um, oh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol, acetone, something like that to get them clean. And butternut does make a conducting grease that they call it's not butter uh, that you can uh, put in all the connections there that not only seal very well, but they'll hold that connection for basically forever. I mean, that is, is uh, pretty good stuff there. You can get that from uh, DX Engineering, uh, who now manufactures the butternut antennas. My experience with butternut antennas has not been terribly good. Um, I have uh, uh, an HF9V, which I completely rebuilt. I mean, down to taking every nut and bolt off of that thing and putting that thing back together very carefully, uh, lining it up and using that uh, it's not butter stuff like I was supposed to. And the antenna went up and uh, was a stinker to tune. Um, we finally got it tuned. I had to put my wife in the shack uh, she was on her cell phone. I was out with the antenna on my cell phone. We'd move something an inch, she'd tell me what it did, and move it another inch, she'd tell me what it did, and so on. We were getting down to half inch, quarter inch increments on things uh, to actually get it tuned. We finally did get it tuned, and when it was tuned, it was a fabulous antenna. Of course, they had a fairly large radio field for it, um, but it was a very good antenna. Now, what happened to it was, um, you know, I had put everything back together, but the 20, 25 years of wind and stuff like that finally just wore it out. So I took it down because it wouldn't hold SWR in the wind. The SWR would keep changing as different things made contact and so on. So that antenna has been replaced with the Step IR um, big IR, which is a vertical antenna. It's uh, a pretty expensive antenna. I mean, you get what you pay for. It's nice. It's very, very nice. Uh, operates on an entirely different principle from um, a pre-tuned antenna. It has a tube in it. Here, I'll show you on the It 
has a tube that goes up 33 feet or 35 and then down here is a coil of copper tape and a little stepper motor that steps enough of the tape up into here for the band that you're on and it does it quite precisely it's a stepper motor so it can count the steps and uh, furthermore on some of the lower bands you can use what they call a three-quarter uh, length instead of one quarter of length vertical and it all tunes very nicely it also has a large coil down here for use on 80 meters which is steppable so you can get all of 80 meters in there very nice antenna but it's very expensive now you were mentioning the gray line antenna um, the flagpole that does not need radials that is something that you might look into I think what you are looking for is simplicity and effectiveness. And the gray line antenna will give you that. Recognize that for a gray line antenna, you are going to need to pour a foundation. Now, that may just be a slab into which you set the nuts, but it, there's going to be concrete involved. Okay, so that the thing will stand up properly. Uh, it is designed as a flagpole. And a flagpole, when there's a flag on it and there's wind, there's considerable bending moment on that. And unless you have a solid foundation, it's going to bend for that. So let's see if we've answered all of your questions. Um, and I think your son can easily put that in because it'd be very simple. The uh, butternut antenna is not a simple antenna to assemble. And like I said, it's a stinker to tune. Once you get it tuned, it's okay, um, but you don't have to do much off for the thing not to tune. 256 to 1 is too high an SWR. That's the equivalent of an infinite SWR. You've got something that's broken open or is somehow um, uh, 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 short-circuited. So you need to deal with that. So, Gary, I hope that helps uh, with your questions there. I would advise that gray line antenna simply for its simplicity. Um, you put it up and it works. Um, you don't have things to tune and so on. Something that your son can easily handle. And then, of course, you've got to get the coax back to the, uh, to the shack. So, there you have it. Now, if you're watching this, I would ask you to please feed the algorithm by uh, subscribing to this channel, clicking like, sharing it. Uh, also, if you would like to contribute financially to this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support. Just decastlercom slash support. D-C-A-S-L-E-R dot com slash support. And that'll take you right there. There's a variety of things that you can do if you'd like. And until we next meet... 73.